What does Atiku really want from P2B? He's still sending emissaries to him looking for a sort of alliance while in the petition that he and the PDP submitted to the Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal, they are begging the court to order a rerun presidential election between Atiku and Tinubu. Though this is an alternative prayer in Atiku's petition, we will see more details about their petition in a moment, plus the similarities with that of the Labour Party and their chances. Anyway, is this latest move by Atiku an acceptance that the Labour Party won the presidential election? Remember that PDP revealed that the Labour Party scored more than 900,000 votes in Lagos State, which means that other parties didn't get the required 25%. Up till now, the Labour Party haven't released their own figure in Lagos State. Even in their petition, they only cited Rivers, Benue and others. So what kind of alliance might Atiku be seeking from P2B? Does he want P2B to accommodate PDP members or make commitment to do so if he's eventually declared the winner of the election? In exchange, PDP will support the Labour Party in court by tendering their Situation Room report, which will obviously not only increase the pressure on APC but also most likely convince the judges. This is a given. Since Atiku is praying the court to declare him winner, he must tender evidence to prove that he won, which of course includes polling units results and other documents. And when they do that, the court will now have two matching polling unit results in some states, which will be at the advantage of Labour Party. This is because there are some states where the PDP couldn't rig and APC did, which leads us to another reason he might be seeking the alliance with Labour Party. Maybe he just wants cooperation, where they don't have enough evidence Labour Party will provide them if they have, and vice versa. Scratch my back, I scratch yours. To come and vote. Those who are traders, who are residents in the environment, who are not allowed to come and vote. They slap the agent, collect his phone, remove his tag. I have to call the police officer. They were just looking. This is why an alliance will be difficult with PDP because they also stole votes from the Labour Party. And some PDP members will make the list that Professor Pat Tommy led Big Tent is compiling for the possible sanctions by the United States. Yes, the list was demanded by the US, people who rig elections in Nigeria that at the slightest opportunity they run abroad, they should face visa sanctions, they should stay in the country where they rig elections. Anyway, the latest emissary that Atiku Abubakar sent to P2B in this their wild chase of an alliance is the former core marshal of the Federal Road Safety, Osta Chidoka. Chidoka didn't reveal much about his meeting with P2B. He only said that he was sent by Atiku Abubakar to seek possible alliance with the Labour Party. Remember that P2B has said that they went into the presidential election alone as the Labour Party and they will fight for the stolen mandate in court alone as Labour Party. It must have been a humbling experience for Osta Chidoka. His younger brother was beaten by the Labour Party candidate in the Federal House of Reps election in Anambra State. The PDP guys never gave P2B a chance. They attacked his campaign, they threw jabs at his person, they did all sorts of things to demarcate him before and after the elections. Some of them even said that P2B will not win Anambra State in the presidential election. The attack on P2B continued after the presidential election and Osta Chidoka and other PDP chieftains couldn't call PDP social media influencers to order. Now they are seeking alliance. What sort of alliance? Maybe they just want a united opposition. PDP couldn't take advantage of all the failures of the APC administration the past eight years. They couldn't play the role of an opposition party till P2B and Labour Party started doing the job for them before election. Instead of joining them, they started attacking P2B at a time it looked like Labour Party was the party in power because they were receiving knocks from APC and the PDP, left, right and centre. Atiku himself needs to come down from his high horse. After he lost the election, he still had the audacity to talk down on P2B that P2B won PDP strongholds in the South, which obviously reduced the chances of PDP, but that it wasn't enough to make P2B president. What about Atiku that couldn't unite the PDP before the election? Why is he seeking an alliance with the Labour Party since he thinks he can go it alone? Or is Atiku Abubakar playing games? In public, he will present a different posture. Behind the scenes, he keeps sending emissaries 
Does this latest move by Atiku have anything to do with Ihedioha, the former deputy speaker? Ihedioha withdrew from Imo State governorship primaries because it looks like PDP won't conduct an open primaries. They want to go by consensus. P2B campaigned for Ihedioha the last time he contested and he won, only to be removed by the Supreme Court. Instead of Ihedioha returning the gesture, he was among the first to play down P2B's chances. Remember his saboteur remarks? Although he later apologized, but most southern politicians never learn. You don't need to talk down on someone just because you want to prove your loyalty to another politician. You are not even in the same race with P2B. You will never see northern politicians talk down on others or a state governor talking down on a candidate from his state, like Soludo did. Soludo even went as far as saying that P2B wasn't in the race. What did they gain? Nothing. They only lost. They lost goodwill, some lost elections to the structuralist party, people like Chimaroke, Ekunife and others. Seriously, PDP brought whatever is happening to them today in the South to themselves. They couldn't just see beyond their arrogance and corruption. Will PDP guys in the North ever accept a power shift from a Southerner to another Southerner? That's a capital no. So why did they expect the people in the South to accept it? especially when a third option exists in the person of P2B, who is not only younger than all of them, his humility, simple way of life, and the prudence with which he managed the little Anambra state resources when he was governor. All these set him apart from the other candidates. That was why Atiku was roundly rejected in the South, and they had to resort to rigging and stealing votes from the Labour Party. The party they told us didn't stand a chance, even with all the rigging, the Labour Party still won 11 states and the Federal Capital Territory. Imagine how many states it will be when the stolen mandate is eventually returned by the court. Rivers, Benue and the likes were all won by the Labour Party. What it shows is that Peter B is a stronger politician than Atiku Abubakar, who out of his arrogance tried in vain to convince the South East that he is the stepping stone to Igbo presidency. You haven't been able to make yourself president. The North, you claim that they don't know P2B, seems like they don't know you either. Because if Buhari is not in the contest, an Atiku and Northerner couldn't win the North in a landslide the way Buhari won in the past, that means he's not popular in the North, as he wants Nigerians to believe. During the campaigns, he kept projecting that the North wants a Northerner to continue after Buhari. That was Kwan Kwasu's projection too, when he was approached to be the vice presidential candidate on the Labour Party. PDP guys kept saying that only a northerner can stop the APC, but people saw through their deception. They were only pushing those narratives for their own benefit. It wasn't as if Nigerians never knew about political propaganda of the different parties, but in this 2023 presidential election, people's choice was made easy by the disastrous Buhari and APC administration. Yes, it was very easy for people to take a decision to vote for P2B over the other candidates. His candidacy came at the right time and was also made easy by two candidates who believe so much in transactional politics. Unfortunately for them, this time around, Nigerians were ready to take their money and still vote for another person. That's why instead of bribing the electorate directly, they took the money to the election officials, police and thugs who were willing to do their bidding. That was how the election was rigged. Did PDP foresee all this? Yes, they did. They too had a huge budget for election logistics, which means rigging anyway. It was just that APC being backed by the state outrigged the PDP. If PDP was in power, it would have been the same thing. They would have outrigged the opposition. Yes, P2B has proved that the money politicians spend in renting crowds to come to campaign rallies is such a huge waste. He might have spent billions too in the campaigns, but that's small compared to what Atiku Abubakar and Bola Tinubu spent in the campaigns and rigging. Their own expense started from the party primaries, where they spent millions of dollars to bribe delegates. P2B actually left PDP because of the transactional politics at play, and he got the Labour Party nomination on a platter, he spent less, ran an issue-based campaign which endeared people to him and the Labour Party. And in the end, he still won the election, though it was stolen. 
Today, Labour Party has a governor-elect in Abia State. They have senators, House of Representative members. They've become hot cake. All they need now going forward is to attract the best candidates in subsequent elections. All the off-season elections that are coming up, Imo State Governorship Election, Edo State, Anambra, and many others. The more elected officials from Labour Party perform in office, the more they will attract voters. That's how the popularity of the Labour Party will keep rising. Good governance is the ultimate political campaign. When a governor performs creditably in office, he wouldn't need much campaign when going for a second term because his projects and good deeds will campaign for him. Now, let's see snippets from the PDP petition to the appeal court. These petitions were submitted around the same time at the presidential election petitions tribunal, but that of the PDP wasn't trending because people are aware that they didn't win the election. The Labour Party petition has been trending because of the single fact that P2B said that they won the election. As you can see from the PDP's petition, they also won the court to disqualify Tinubu because he wasn't qualified to contest the presidential election. This is the first relief that the Labour Party is seeking in their petition. Another similarity is the 25% in the Federal Capital Territory, which obviously PDP and APC didn't receive, which nullifies his plea to be declared the winner of the presidential election. If the appeal court affirms the Supreme Court interpretation that a candidate must score 25% in the FCT in order to be declared winner, that means Atiku cannot be declared winner based on that, even if he's able to prove that he got more votes than Tinubu. Next one is their prayer to the court to nullify the presidential election and order a fresh one because of the electoral law violations by INEC. These are the four similarities in the petitions of the Labour Party and the PDP. Now to the strange one, Atiku is praying the court to order a rerun election between the APC and the PDP. <laughs> This sounds funny, but they have a reason for making this demand, if they can prove it. According to the PDP, the votes from polling units which were either undeclared or not uploaded to the IREV or even completely missing. These votes are greater than the margin between Tinubu and Atiku. So based on that, they are saying that INEC shouldn't have declared the winner without accounting for the votes. Although it looks unlikely that one candidate will receive all the votes, but they are in the millions. INEC should have accounted for the votes before the declaration. Anyway, Nigerians are hoping and waiting for the legal fireworks to begin. Let's see how the judges will handle these petitions. Thanks for watching.